Hello everyone, that manga kid here to do a review on False Memories. This is by Isaku Natsume. It is a two-volume yaoi series uh, put out by Sublime. And it is wonderful. I absolutely loved this series. And if you are a yaoi fan and you have not read this, drop what you're doing, go buy it. It is so well done. Uh, Isaku Natsume is also the mangaka for uh, Candy Color Paradox, which is currently releasing right now. I believe there are there are two volumes out right now. Volume three should be out within the next couple months, I think. And that series as well, fantastic, but I'll do a review of that when that series is completed. Um, but I was reading that and I went, this is awesome. I should pick up the other series that she has released in English, which is False Memories. And I'm so glad I did. This is, if you are looking for a yaoi series that does not um, use the trope of basically sexual assault, uh, I would say pick up Isaku Natsume's work because both this and Candy Color Paradox from this point on, at least with Candy Color Paradox, do not have that trope. Uh, it doesn't begin, the first sexual experience doesn't begin with someone forcing the other person or coercing the other person or whatever uh, into having sex. Uh, so this story, False Memories, is about, uh, I think it actually follows both of them. But for the main part, you're following this character here, whose name I cannot remember. Uh... It's Nakano and Suda. Suda broke Nakano's heart in many important pieces. Uh, I believe Nakano is the gray-haired man, but don't hold me to that. Um, so basically, this guy, I believe he works in like marketing or something or production, and this man works in uh, toy design. And so they are put on a team together. Their two companies are, are collaborating. And uh, they used to know each other in high school, I believe. And, of course, they had a bit of a fling in high school. Uh, they were friends. They were really good friends and had sex. And then kind of things fizzled out from there. They lost contact. And now... A decade later, they're adults, they're working, they come into contact with each other professionally. And starts off with them, you know, agreeing that they're, you know, they're, this is strictly a work relationship, and of course it doesn't end that way. Um, I will preface this with, if you're uncomfortable with uh, scenes of teenagers engaging in sexual acts, don't pick this one up because this does have a flashback to the initial um, high school relationship situation that happened. Uh, and so if that's going to make you uncomfortable, skip this one. But, uh, other than that, this is as good as you're going to get. Uh, that, that doesn't bother me because it wasn't like, I don't know, it was a flashback to the situation. So you saw what happened that night and then you see what happened afterward. It does several flashbacks to their high school days and why things kind of fell apart for them. And then, you know, most of it takes place in this present day. And so uh, it is a story about adults. However, it involves their teenage selves. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, it's very pleasant. I just, I loved it so much. This character, uh, he, the main character... He's kind of a loner. He's a bit standoffish, so people are put off by him. Whereas this guy, of course, was the charming, goofy guy in high school who was willing to be friends with the quiet, you know, dorky, um, angry-looking kid. Which is why, you know, he kind of had feelings for him because he was the one person who actually spoke to him and was friends with him. And as adults... He's, they both still have very similar personalities. And so it's the story revolves around him trying to keep his distance because he doesn't want to get hurt. And this guy kind of obliviously existing and being like, 
what happened? What did I do? You know, uh, but it wasn't anything terrible. What I really love about Isaku Natsume is it seems as though uh, their stories are portrayed rather realistically. Uh, everything that happened to these two in terms of their high school situation that happened and then the way that things unfolded afterward is very realistic. If you're two male friends who happen to have sex for whatever reason and then try and, you know, work away from that in a, in a time when that is not socially acceptable and you don't know what's going on. These aren't characters who, you know, identify as gay and were, you know, we're gay, we're both gay, we're going to date kind of situation. This is a situation of, like, this happened, and now where do we go from here? And it unfolds kind of those feelings that have lasted over a decade because they'd stopped talking to each other. And then they meet in a workplace situation, which is completely in, in a situation where they cannot ignore each other. They have to work together. Their companies are forcing them to. And they have to be professional. And it, it but deal with the fact that they're carrying baggage from a situation that happened 10 years ago. And so it's really, really fascinating. And the workplace, I love the way that Isaku Natsume incorporates the workplace, because this is the same with Candy Color Paradox. It really goes into their work lives and what their jobs are and how this relationship is affecting that. And it, it, it just feels like a well-rounded story that isn't completely just uh, porn, basically. Um, because some Yaoi is just that, whereas this is a fully realized story that happens to have a scene or two of sexual explicitness, but it's not the focal point. Um, fan service is not the focal point of this story, which is what I appreciate. And the, the art is really good i'll show you some art from volume one i i really enjoy it i think that it's it's well done um sublime always has a color page in the front that's kind of standard for all of their stuff um won't show you that um yeah you've got kind of i really like the characters faces in particular uh, the main guy. It's, maybe it's something about his eyes, maybe, that I just, I really enjoy. I don't know. But it's the backgrounds, you know, there's not a ton. It's not, you know, some nice nature scenes or anything uh, in particular. It's more about the characters. Uh, but He's so, I find this character to be so attractive. I don't know what it is, honestly, but I, I remember my the whole time reading it, I was like, wow, this guy, something about his face is, is really, really good looking. Um, but yeah, the art's pretty good as far as, you know, my, I'm concerned. Um, the blue and the pink is really nice together. It's short and sweet. It's two volumes. You can't go wrong. And it's a good story for two volumes. You know, I was left feeling like if there was more, I would enjoy it. However, it didn't feel incomplete. It didn't feel rushed. It just felt like, you know, this is the part of their life that we're getting. This is the chunk that we're getting. And that's, you know, whatever happens afterward happens afterward and we don't need to see it. Um, but yeah, it was, I almost dropped it. It was really, really good. And like I said, if you have not read this yet and you're a Yaoi fan, please go and pick it up and read it. I highly recommend Candy Color Paradox as well. Um, yeah, I hope that, that more of Isaku Natsume's stuff gets, gets released here in English in the future because I will absolutely pick it up uh, immediately. This was so enjoyable. I will reread this many times and I will enjoy it every time. Um, yeah, it's very refreshing to have a Yaoi series that doesn't involve um, sexual assault because while I don't write off series that have those tropes because uh, I do own a few and I did enjoy the series as a whole but those scenes always just leave a bad taste in my mouth and I 
I just, I don't know. I do, I do, I volunteer and do sexual health education for youth, um, specifically LGBT youth, and I, it doesn't, it rubs me the wrong way when, when I read stuff like that, um, and I know it's just a book and whatever, but it doesn't make me feel good, and so I have to kind of block it out and then enjoy the rest of the story, but this didn't give me that vibe at all, and yeah, I just, I appreciated the character's kind of uh, responsibility and owning up to actions and, and processing and having a conversation like an adult. Um, I just really, I really loved it. And I think you should check it out for sure. Anyway, that's it from me. If you have any questions or you've read false, was it false memories uh, or anything else by Yusaku Natsume, please let me know. I'd love to chat about it. Thanks for watching.